You have just witnessed the full life of a melody. You were there the moment it was born. You listened while it was alive. And you were there at the moment of its death. And now you are witnessing what surrounds it. Silence. You see, music, like life, is made out of time, which means we can point at two specific points where it starts and where it ends. And it only exists between these two moments. You, right now, are somewhere in between these two moments, which means that there exists a date, a set time, a tick of the clock that will be your final second in this world. We, all of us here in this room, are one day going to die. And though that moment may be hours, weeks or years away from us, we do know that that number is not infinite. This can be confronting. We do not like to think about the end of our lives. You may even wonder, why am I killing the mood with these uncomfortable words at such a nice event? The reason is that there is incredible wisdom to be found in the fact that we will not be around forever. To show this, I would like to share a personal story with you. I'm sitting in front of a campfire. The wood is crackling peacefully and the flickering light reveals smiles on the faces of my friends who have joined me. It is one of those perfect nights full of friendship and happiness. But as so happens when watching dancing flames and enjoying a few glasses of golden liquid, the mind starts to wonder. And my mind wanders to a sinister thought. This is going to end. In an hour from now, my friends will cycle home and they'll be alone. And after that, how many campfire nights will I still spend with these people? Will it be a hundred? Ten? Only a few? We could have an argument, they could get sick, they could have an accident, a pandemic could break out, or World War III could start. Or, ultimately, they could, and they will, die. On this night, I realize there is no infinite number of campfire nights with my friends. You have likely heard the melody I played in the beginning dozens of times. And I hope you will hear it many times more. But there will come a day when you will hear it for the final time. One day, the final chord of this music will, for you, be the final chord. Forever. Now, campfires and melodies are just some of the things we have a limited amount of. Most fundamentally, we are all limited by time. On average, we all get about 80 years. Now, that's a lot of time, but it's far from infinite. And that limits us. I found this out when I was eight. I heard on the news that the next solar eclipse in the Netherlands would be in 113 years. So I immediately asked my mom, Mom, can I become 121 years old? She told me, honey, I wouldn't count on it. Or even the oldest person in the world who became 122 years would not have been able to celebrate Christmas in every country in the world, since there are 195 countries. You see, the fact that we are going to die limits our experiences in life. Another very clear way to see this is by looking at the behavior of people who get sick. The mother of my best friend was diagnosed with cancer. And she had only one year left to live. 
So their family immediately packed up all their stuff and went to travel South America for half a year. Because that's what she had always wanted. Now, does that mean that we all have to do the short-term things that we still need to do because time might run out and we are going to die? Not at all. But what it does show us is that time matters. Life's hourglass is filled with a finite number of grains. It's kind of like we have a year's budget. We all get a number of years and we get to spend these on the things that we value. Now, we're at University of Twente here, so let's say I chose to do a studies that takes me six years. That's not just six years of my life. That is six of 80 years of my life, or seven and a half percent. That is a block of seven and a half percent that is me now. I will never be able to spend the seven and a half percent in any other way. I could, of course, go study again, but then I will just have added another block of 7.5% that is now also me. I am almost done studying physics. But after one year, I wasn't really in love with it anymore. Now, I was, and maybe still am, a pretty stubborn, stupid kid. So I just continued doing it anyway. But if I had realized earlier how valuable time is and how limited it is, my actions could have been different. It is easy to get lost in the fog of life. Maybe the swirling river life can be led us to a place where we don't want to be and we're now spending precious time doing things we don't like. But seeing that every bit of time is part of the total time we have can give us just the scare we need to reevaluate how we are spending it. Not only is every second one that you will never get back, every second forms a small part of who you are. If you spend most of your time doing physics, you're a physicist. If you spend most of your time playing music, you're a musician. We are what we spend our time on. Because what else do we have apart from time? You can't play the music of your life forever. So are you playing the music that you want to be playing right now? Will the next minute, day or year be a part of who you want to be or not? Now at this point, my friends are probably wondering why I'm staring so seriously into the fire. But this roller coaster of realizations isn't over yet. Because now I'm thinking, Let's say I get 50 more. 50 more campfire nights with my friends and then it's over. I would miss it. I would really miss it if I could not do this anymore. And I picture myself 60 years from now. I'm sitting alone in a chair watching television. There's a picture of my friends hanging on the wall. And I'm sure I would give everything I own just to spend one more night with my friends. What in a lonely, aging life would be better than to gather all your friends around and spending a night around a campfire with them? Then I look up. It's happening right now. My friends are here, right in front of me and around me. This perfect night, for which I would sell all my belongings in the future, is happening right here and right now. And I'm struck by the immense value of a night like that. I realize I am doing one of the best things I could ever be doing in my life. And I didn't even know it before. A true, honest, bitter understanding that life offers only a limited number of experiences, gives us the chance to truly and honestly experience them. I realized I should value that moment I was there just as much as I would maybe one day miss it in the future. This applies to everything. We might end up in a wheelchair and would give everything to just go for another walk around the block. 
The man who wrote the melody I played at the beginning is called Ludwig van Beethoven. He lost his hearing as a musician. The thing he loved most, he couldn't ever witness anymore. What he would have given just to hear music once again. The fact that we will at some point be unable to do them reveals the incredible value that lies in the small and beautiful things in life. And it helps us realize that every time we are doing these things, they already are absolute gifts. Now there's a name for what we have been talking about. A phrase in Latin. Memento mori. Remember death. But don't let it put you down. That's not what I want you to take away from all of this. I want you to remember that there's only one way to get to death, and that is to live. Death is just the silence that follows after the music of our life has played out. But it's not about that silence. It's about the bit of music that came before. And of this music, you are both the audience and the composer. You are creating life and experiencing it at the same time. So I would urge you, make it something beautiful and listen to it well. Do you know the name of the piece I played for you? It's called Ode to Joy. Beethoven wrote this near the end of his life. He was completely miserable. He couldn't hear his own music anymore and he felt like his life was slipping out of his own hands. And still, while nothing seemed good in his life anymore, he wrote this piece of music, an ode to joy. And look what it has brought about. We are still playing this music to, remem to remind us of the joy and the good in life. It now stands as a symbol for light in darkness and is played over and over at significant historical events. So this music, this bit of time that only exists between the silences is still bringing good to the world time and time again. Your life is also just a bit of time. But if we make our lives a melody worth repeating, who knows what good it might do to the world. And you have just spent a significant amount of your time listening to me. And if I can say one more thing to you, I would say, go plan another campfire night with your friends. It's time.